Harp was born in Gaucho, Selkirk, Scotland. Let's have a blast from the past and see what it was like when he was a baby. Oh, my darling Wungo, my seventh child, how I love you so. I love you too, Mommy! <laughs> what a loving family he had. When Mungo grew up, he received a great education and was apprenticed by Thomas Anderson. He then left to study in the University of Edinburgh. Imagine what he would have felt when he received his diploma. Anderson! Oh, Mungo, my dear child. It took you so many years to earn this diploma and finally you made a start. Thank you, Professor Anderson. Thank you. <sighs> Imagine what Mungo must have felt when he received his diploma. But good luck didn't stop then. He met a guy called Sir Joseph Banks, the president of the Royal Society, through his brother-in-law, James Dixon. Mongo, my dear friend! Sir Joseph! Thank you for coming today. Please sit down. So Joseph, my dear friend, why have you called me here today? I am here to give you a post of assistant surgeon on board the Worcester yes. East India Man. I don't know what to say! Say yes! Yes! Well, sir, Bumble does have many good things coming his way, but that doesn't stop there. He went on his first adventure to Bencool Sumatra in 1792, and on his return journey in 1793, he contributed eight new fish to the Linnean Society. Oh, look at all these fish! New species, for sure. Yes, they are, sir. You see, just looking at them right now makes me so tempted to jump in and get them. Go ahead, sir. Stay on the boat. Look at all these fish! Wow, they're marvelous, sir. We must go describe them now. The Linnean Society is in deep need of these fish descriptions. Yes, sir. You see, these fish are all so different. Yes, sir! Yes, you see, you see this one, this one, right down the Sumatran longfish. Yes, sir! It has green with a bluish tinge. And this, this Sumatran tailfish, it's completely pink, but in the light, it may look a tinge of purple. Yes, sir! And this one, this odd-shaped fish, which we have not classified yet, my friend, it's quite yellow with a white tail. Right that there. Yes, this is very interesting. What a life he led, but that was just a good beginning. His real thrills came from his epic adventures, which was in 1795 when he went to explore the River Niger. But to roll the tape. Sure thing. When he got back to England, Mungo was an instant success. His first book, Travels in the Interior Districts of Africa, was quick to sell out. He used his 1,000 pound, pound, which he got in loyalty, and married Thomas Anderson's daughter, Alice. They settled in Selkirk and set up medical practice, but settled life soon bored him. So he went out looking for new adventures. Let's roll the tape. Sure. By the time Isaac reached Laidley in Yambia, news of Mungo's death had already reached the coast. It was believed that after venturing over 1,000 miles on the river, him and his small parties had already drowned. Azakwa did not believe this, so he was sent back to discover the truth. Unfortunately, after when he reached the Rusa Rapids, the only remains he could find was the munitions belt. The irony was that by traveling through the center of the river to avoid contact with the local Muslims, they were mistaken by Muslim tra raiders and were shot at. They were murdered. Mungo must have felt when he received his diploma, but good luck didn't stop then. He met a guy called Sir Joseph Banks, the president of the Royal Society, introduced by his brother-in-law, James Dixon. <laughs> oh my! 
Congo, my dear friend. Sir Joseph, thank you for coming here today. Let's have a seat. Sir Joseph, why have you called me here today? I am here to give you a post of assistant surgeon on board the Worcester East India Man. I don't know what to say. Say yes. <laughs> 